right, we're here at Devil's Den RV Park. Um, this video isn't really about the Devil's Den itself. It's more about the actual RV park. Um, we did go, I did go snorkeling in the den. Really cool experience, great to do if you're coming for a day trip. Great, check it out, awesome. If you can scuba dive, it's gonna be even better. Um, but this is about the park. I feel like there's not a lot of information about the actual park out there. So that's what we're gonna concentrate on today. The RV sites, they pretty much have three kind of different sites uh, available. Behind me here is the back end sites going along the back, the back fence. Um, so you've got those. Those are all obviously back in full hookups. So for hookups, you have sewer, water, 50, 30, and 20 amp on all those back end sites. All of them are pretty, pretty standard, decent size, not too small. Um, they're not huge, but not too small. Here's one that's empty. There's two back end sites you kind of want to look out for, um, and that's going to be site seven and site eight. Every, all the other back-end sites are pretty standard, pretty normal. It's just these two. This is site seven behind me here. Very extra wide. They've got this nice little kind of grill thing and a picnic table on a little pad. The picnic table's bolted down so you're not moving it if it's in your way. So the problem with this site, site seven, you've got this panel right here, the cords with the telephone pole um, or the stabilizers for the telephone pole coming down. And then your sewer connection and everything is another six feet from there. So again, it's really wide. You do have a lot of space, but to bring a camper into this site, you've got to kind of angle it back a little bit or come straight if you don't have a slide. If you have a slide, you're going to have to angle it a little bit. You're going to have a long path to your sewer. Um, your water and electric, really probably you'll par probably be okay on, um, but you're probably gonna need at least 20 feet of sewer hose to connect in that site. Um, it, it's not a big deal. Just if you get site seven, be prepared that you might need a little longer sewer hose. The site we're in is site eight. Now the issue with site eight is, your site starts over here, right? Where that post is, and that's your connections. And about three feet in, you've got a palm tree. <laughs> so backing in is a little more difficult. We came from the wrong direction. If you come from a, a, the different direction that we came in, it's easier to back in. Um, we did it the worst way possible. It just, it was horrible. So those two sites for the back end sites are the only ones to kind of look out for. Very manageable, just site seven. You might need a longer sewer hose. Site eight might be a little complicated to get in, especially if you have a longer camper because that palm tree is kind of almost in the middle of the site. The next setup that you have alongside the back end sites, you've got the full hookup pull throughs. Very nice sites, pretty spacious for pull throughs. You've got sewer, water, electric, you got all the hookups. And those are kind of in the middle of the park. It's a very small park. There's only, I think like 32 sites here. Um, the next group of sites they have are pull-throughs, but they're not full hookups. So you need to be careful when you are booking online to make sure, you know, if you want full hookups or not. So in these ones are right at kind of the start of the RV park. So there's the entrance road coming in back to the RV park. And then here are all the pull-through sites here. So these are sites 27 to 32, I believe. And these do not have sewer. They've got water and electric, but no sewer. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you get one of these sites, they do have a dump station and it's literally kind of right around the bend right here. So it's not far the dump station at least. So if you've got to use a tote or something like that, it still can be manageable. They don't allow drone footage anymore here. And I'm blaming Mark from Keep Your Daydream because I believe he crashed his drone into the, into the den, hit the Spanish moss. Um, but here's an overview of the park. We've got the non hookup or non full hookup pull through sites. And then in the center here are the pull through sites, full hookup. And then behind that are the back end sites, full hookup. For amenities, there's no playground. 
Um, if you notice when we were kind of looking at the sites, there is no bathrooms or anything over in the RV park area. The closest bathrooms are gonna be by the pool. There is a pool here, it is heated. I don't know what the exact temperature it's heated to, and to be honest, when we've been here, it's gone, it's felt like anyways, it's gone up and down a lot. Um, we've gone in a few times, it's a really nice little pool, nice little pool area. So they got a shower, outdoor shower, at the pool. I told you it was cold this morning, so you got the steam coming off of the pool. I bet you would feel really warm right now. Um, and then this behind me here is the bathrooms that is the closest to the RV park. If you're somebody that doesn't use your RV shower bathroom or something like that, you do have a little bit of a walk to get here. All right, so behind me is the bathrooms pool area. All the way down at the end of that road is where the RV park area is. Again, a little bit of a walk, manageable, not horrible, but you are probably to the closest site, maybe, you know, close to 100 yards. One thing that's not really an amenity of the park, um, but definitely a huge benefit to staying at Devil's Den, if you're here on a Saturday night, there is a farm next door. They are part owners to Devil's Den. It's called Two Hawks Hammock. They do a concert every Saturday night to benefit local musicians. Um, and they'll, they usually do like pulled pork, hot dogs, sodas, beer, wine, they call it a happy hour. Um, during the winter, it's been going from like four to seven because it gets dark early. But I think the hours are usually like five to eight o'clock-ish. Um, if you check out their website, Facebook page, they'll have information about that on there. Very cool, there have been great musicians here, everything else, and it's just been a great place to go. Um, they just set up in the barn, the musician, and then everybody kind of hangs out in this area. And they also do have this beautiful old oak tree with the Spanish moss coming down. There's a couple swings in there for kids to play on. And then they've got a, um, like I said, they do food, drinks, that kind of a deal. Um, they have animals, goats, horses, emu, and they you know, cut up vegetables and stuff and let you feed the animals during the concert too. So it gives something for kids to do. Definitely a cool perk to stay in here at Devil's Den. It's literally like right across from where the pool is. The pool and everything is right behind me and you would go right there. So 100, 200 yards from your camper, Saturday nights, live concerts, definitely something to check out, pretty cool. So one of the main reasons people stay here is to scuba dive down into Devil's Den. Um, Devil's Den gets its name based on cold mornings like this. And if you have a cold morning here, it's really cool to come over and see. The water inside is always 72 degrees. So if it's 30, 40, 50 degrees out, you actually get the steam coming out, out of the sinkhole that opened up. Um, and that's where the name Devil's Den apparently came from. It looks like the devil's breath coming out of the earth kind of a deal. Kind of a perk to this campground is having something as neat and cool as this here. Um, there are a few people that stay here basically all winter. There's an instructor that stays here just about all winter from up north. And you know, they do scuba diving lessons and everything here. Um, and there's a few people that just come down and hang out for the winter and scuba dive. Cause there's a lot of other places to scuba dive and snorkel around this area too. Within an hour of Devil's Den RV park, um, you've got probably close to 20 30 springs at least um, there's probably a lot more than that um, we've gone to about 10 of the different springs plus you have the blue grotto too pretty much across the road um, that's kind of similar to devil's den springs it's just opened up um, it's not down into the ground it's kind of level with the ground that's the reason why we stayed here was we wanted to see all the springs not just devil's den springs but lots of the other springs around um, rainbow springs was really cool manatee springs was really cool um, blue springs there's crystal river which has a few springs on it including three sister springs so there's a lot to see within an hour drive of here all right so there's no playground but they do have horseshoes cornhole there's a volleyball net and also there's a ladder ball set up too. Um, people use it while they're waiting to scuba dive and snorkel. 
Um, we've used it just as the RVers to come out. It is right next to the office area. Another cool thing they have here at Devil's Den Springs is also this kind of pond, nature kind of area that they have. It's kind of to the front of, cl closer to the front of the entrance. Um, basically you've got, as you come in, the tent campground, you've got this, you've got the spring, the pool, and then far to the right is the RV park. So this is really cool, just come down and walk, take a little picnic. You've got this little pond. There's kind of a walking trail around it. There's also a few kind of little, kind of nature trail-ish kind of things that are around, very short, nothing long or not really like a hike, just a little kind of walk into the woods. Um, but they have a few picnic tables. They've got a large gazebo. Um, they do have a couple ducks. There's also a koi pond too that you can um, feed the fish. There's a little quarter machine and you can feed the koi pond or the koi in the koi pond. Uh, my daughters love that. She's gone crazy. If I want her to go on a walk, I just say, hey, let's go feed the fish. She'll actually go on a walk with me. Also too, if you're staying here a little more long term and kind of almost like this pond area where you can walk around and everything, right next door is a place called Cedar Oaks. Um, they've got a nice little, basically it's this times 20. Um, nice walking area, uh, gardens, that kind of a deal. Um, big pond, I guess it used to be like a rock quarry and they've kind of made it into a pond. Um, kind of a cool place to go check out if you're here around the area. There's also a couple of resident cats that, cats that walk around and everything too. So here is the koi pond. So animals are allowed in the RV park, by the way. They're just not allowed up by the spring area and kind of in more of the devil's den area, I guess. Um, but the RV park, you are allowed to have dogs and animals. They do also have technically four cabins for rent, um, A, B, C, and D. I think they're all the same, not 100% sure on that, uh, but the cabins are basically two units that are split in the middle. So you've got like cabin A and B here, and C and D over here. Um, I peeked in the windows, they, they do look nice. Um, it, it, it's, it, they're not a big, huge kind of cabin thing, um, but they have more information of that online. Uh, but they do have cabins for rent. So it's another option of something that maybe you want to look into staying at. They do seem to actually be fairly priced as well. All right, so like I said, kind of to the front of the park is the tent camping area. Um, it's actually a pretty large tent camping area. Most of them seem to have fire pits, picnic tables, that kind of a deal. So you got a little fire pit set up, picnic table, kind of area to park. And they seem to be pretty spacious to have tents set up and that kind of a deal. The whole park, RV side, tent side, gives you kind of a state park feeling. It's not like an RV resort feeling. So if you like that state park feeling, this is definitely a place for you. So here's a view of kind of some of the tent sites. Now here's one negative to tent camping here. The closest real bathrooms and showers are going to be over by the devil's den itself and then you have by the pool area too. They do have porta potties, like maybe four or five of them, maybe ish, three, five, something like that, um, throughout the tent camping area. But the closest bathrooms again, probably about 100 yards away from the tent camping area itself. A couple other things I want to mention, over in the RV park area, there is no garbage. The dumpster's up by the front gate. So you do have to take your garbage all the way from the RV park to the front gate. There's no dumpsters or anything like that back there. So the gate is closed at nighttime. It basically opens up when the park opens and closes when the park closes. So if you're staying here at the RV park, you do need to get the code from the office, obviously. If you're coming in after five o'clock, nobody will be here. Um, so you need to call ahead and get the code, otherwise you're not going to be able to get in. So if you're coming after 5 o'clock, call ahead, let them know, they'll give you the code, you can get in, get set up, that kind of a deal. Coming in off the road is very easy. The park is pretty easy to get around. It's very 
big rig friendly. The only thing you want to watch out for, some of the trees aren't really trimmed back as far as a lot of people would like them, I guess. Um, so you might have a couple things, if you're not careful, a couple tree limbs kind of going on the side. I don't think there's anything like, it's not like large tree, tree limbs or anything big to where it would probably do damage, but you never know. Last thing I want to talk about is kind of the feel of the park. I said it's got like a state park feeling to it. The great thing is, is it feels like you're out in the country. There's not a lot of traffic on the road out here. Um, pretty much it's Devil's Den and Two Hawks Hammock next door. But the good thing is, is you're only a couple minutes from town. There's a Winn-Dixie there for groceries, Dollar General, Family Dollar, a lot of little stores. Um, there's a Walmart about a half an hour away, which isn't too bad but you just have this out in the country feel. We've been walking on the road out here in the morning sometimes, some very gorgeous, very expensive farms um, up the road. It's just, it's a nice walk in the morning, quiet, not a lot of traffic. You might see one or two cars, that's about it. Last thing I wanna mention, even though I think I said the last thing was the last thing I wanna mention. Um, on GPS, basically it was telling us it was Two Hawks Hammock and not Devil's Den. So this is the entrance. You've got the big sign, the big guy there, the gated entrance, that's where you wanna be. If it tells you to keep going down the road, don't. The entrance, there's only one entrance to Devil's Den. There's not multiple entrances. Um, the next one, if you go down to, you can probably turn around right there at Two Hawks Hammock if it GPS does take you there. I don't know if all of them do, mine does. So just kinda keep that in mind. All right. So that's Devil's Den RV Park. If you have any questions, let us know. We stayed here for a month. It's very affordable. I mean, it's a little over 400 bucks for a monthly rate. Nightly rates aren't bad. We've loved our stay here. Place we would come back to. Again, questions, comments, put them down below and we will see you next time.